Hi, this is Lynn Langett for Dun & Bradstreet. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to work with one of the data sets that Dun & Bradstreet offers through the Windows Azure Marketplace. And that is going to be the data set Company Cleanse and Match for Microsoft SQL Server Data Quality Services and other services. So let's get started. So if you're not familiar with Dun & Bradstreet, here's some information about the size and the quality of their commercial data set. They offer it for access via the Azure Marketplace, as well as via their website and DNB Direct. They use tools as well as programmatic access. The Windows Azure Marketplace is, as I say, a one-stop shop for premium data sets from Dan and Bradstreet and other companies. While there, you can browse, consume, or sell your own data. Some of the data is free to try out. Some of the data is free to work with at all times. It's usually a nonprofit kind of data, public health, for example. And some of the data, as in this case, is commercial. So it's high quality data that's used to allow you to enrich the data that you have inside of your enterprise. Now you can work with this data in several different ways. Sometimes you can directly just take a look at it on the Azure Marketplace site. At other times you might want to use exploratory tools like Excel, Power Pivot, or as we're going to show in this screencast, Power Query. You can also use other tools, and you can use in this case Data Quality Services and SQL Server, or Direct API Access, and as I'm going to show, I'm going to use C Sharp and Visual Studio 2012. So first, let's get a sense of what this data set looks like and does. So what is the what is the data consist of, and how would you interact with it, and what would you use it for? The title's pretty accurate here. This is the Cleanse and Match service. So as I mentioned, DNB has this huge data set, uh, 215 plus million global records for businesses and business information that's been validated and has a great amount of detail. So you can see the example here is to take data that you have that has partial information and to match it up so that you can have accurate information, complete information, and eliminate false duplicates. So they have an abbreviated company name or an alternative company name, a PO box versus a street address, and then a full name, and then they have the uh, president listed without a company. So they show on the right, Using the service will allow you to combine all this into one complete and really actionable business record. So to understand this, let's first take a look at the Windows Azure Marketplace. So I'm going to switch to demo. Here I am in the Windows Azure Marketplace where I have signed in and I have contacted DNB to get a promotional code to try out the company Cleanse and Match. So that code will allow me to work with 800 records for my first month at zero cost. And I'll give you the email at the end of this screencast. So inside of here, you'll see the, the description of the offering. You'll see the, uh, the example that I just showed you. And then the most important area for you to look at is under the details. So you're gonna need this service root URI, and I'm just gonna copy it to have any kind of exploration, either in Excel or when you're programmatically accessing. Um, and you'll notice that we have input parameters here that are associated to this calling method, suggest company details, and we have uh, five required input parameters, the company name, the country, the number of suggestions, the confidence, and the state. And then we have optional information that can be used in the cleanse match process. And here are the return parameters. And there are, I believe, around 20 return parameters. So sometimes inside of uh, the Azure Marketplace, you have the ability to explore the data set. This particular one, you don't. So I'm going to show you an alternate method of exploring the data set that I often use. So I'm going to switch over to Excel. And I'm going to show you a feature that's enabled if you download a preview add-in which is called Power Query. This is part of Power BI. So this works ex with Excel 2013. 
So I've switched to the Power Query tab here and I'm going to try to explore this DNB data by going to Other Sources and from OData Feed because this is exposed as an OData Feed. And then I'm going to paste this uh, URI inside here with the DQS Company Match and say OK. And that's going to uh, ask me for what kind of credentials. Now, credentials are required for this. You cannot do anonymous browsing. So you're going to need what's called the feed key. And in order to get that, you're going to need to go over to the Azure Marketplace and go to the data, go to the My Account section, and then you're going to need to copy your primary account key. And here I've pasted my primary account key and I copied it off screen. And now I have the Query Editor window with the calling method shown to me to be available. Now if I click on this, it's going to show me the function and then it's going to show me the input parameters. In order to execute this function and return and work with some data, I need to click Invoke. And what that's going to do is that's going to show me a uh, window where I can fill in the required information. They have examples, so the company name I'm going to put Dell, the state I'm going to put Texas, and then the other things that are required are the country, and I need to scroll down here, and I need to say the, max, the maximum suggestions are three, and the confidence is zero, and I say OK. And now this is executing the query, and you can see I have three possible records inside of Power Query. Now again, if I had hundreds and hundreds of records, and you know I could run the uh, filtering steps inside of Power Query, but just if I wanted to split a column, I could split a column on space, for example, or any delimiter that I wanted, and that would create, you can see a new column here, and then if I wanted to remove a null, and so on and so forth. And when I was done, I can then load this into my workbook and or load it into, um, when I'm done, I can load it into a workbook, pivot, data model. So reviewing key concepts from the demo, the information you're gonna get, need to get from the Windows Azure Marketplace to work with this data set are the URI, which is shown here, Understand we have a single method to work with, which is the suggest company details. Understand the input parameters and pass in the five required parameters. And understand the output parameters, which are 22 output parameters. We did just take a look at using Excel Power Query. And key concepts there are, again, you're going to have to have the URI. You'll have to have your user key, your primary account key, under the my account section from the Windows Azure Marketplace. You'll work with the one method and in order to return information in the query editor window you have to first input the required parameters at minimum and then call the invoke method. Of course this data set is called the company cleanse match for Microsoft Data Quality Services and I actually did a separate screencast on how this data set can be integrated into a knowledge base. So if you're interested in understanding how that process works with DQS, take a look at the screencast that's linked here. Now in this third part, I'm going to discuss how to write an application in C Sharp that consumes DNB data from the Windows Azure Marketplace using this data set. All right, so to get started to work with this data programmatically, there's a couple of tips. First of all, once you're signed in and you have your subscription, then you will have this um, .NET C Sharp class library available. And this is really tricky, so it's one of the reasons I'm making this screencast. There's two ways to programmatically access these data sets. One is to work by uh, adding a service reference, and one is to just add this class library. So you'll need to download this file, and then you'll need to add it to your Visual Studio solution. So I'll show you what that looks like. And the reason for that 
is in addition to the service root URL here, you notice it says this service supports fixed query. Okay, there's two types of queries and you can read about that more by clicking this link, fixed or flexible. Fixed queries require that you add this C Sharp class library rather than adding a service reference. And to make this more clear, I'm going to actually just switch over to Visual Studio. Now I have a completed solution because the code is really quite simple and I'll just take you through it. So over in Visual Studio, you just you know make a new console app and then inside of the console app, you might think that you would add a service reference to the particular service where you would just paste in, and let me just switch back over here, uh, this URI. And I actually um, spent a couple minutes playing around with this because I actually didn't remember this either, so it's good to kind of see it because if you look, it's going to show up and look like it's going to work. And this would create a proxy class. The problem is for fixed queries, this proxy class does not um, function properly and gives kind of a bunch of weird errors. So you do not follow this process. What you rather do is you download this file and you can see here it is, and I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, from Dun & Bradstreet once you subscribe to the service and this is going to give you your objects that you work with. So you can see you've got your namespace inside of here and the key thing is your container which is your proxy class. So if I click down there you can see this is an, an, insta an instance of the data service context. So this is your connection if you will. So once you have that then it's pretty simple coding pattern. So let me switch over here and just show you what it looks like. You basically uh, set up a couple of um, variables for your username and that's the portion of your email address that you signed in on the data market uh, that's just unique to your user so you don't have the at sign whatever the domain is. Then your account key which is that that key that's associated to your user account and then you have the service root URI. Now there's more elegant ways to do this but I just want to do it super simple for the demo here. Um, you will have to add system.net for this a credential passing and then to set up the, the proxy connection you just create um, from this proxy class which is D and B you may remember over here I'll just switch back to show it to you uh, so it's the DME class and then you create an instance of the DNB container and you need to pass in the URI. Uh, so you pass in the URI and then you need to call the credentials um, and those are network credentials which is the user ID and the account key. Now once you do that then you might remember from earlier in the screencast that there is a single method that you can call which is suggest company details and taking just the same example that I showed in Power Query once you do suggest company details, you can see, let me just go in and show you here, and you've got those same parameters inside, and then they have the sample value. So I just passed in the same values, just did a link query here, um, and then I wrote out the result. Now when you write out the result, I just made it super simple, but obviously the, the value in this is that you're going to have those 20 plus parameters that you can capture. Um, so here's all the various parameters that will come back, um, or the return values, I should rather say, um, so that you can have the complete information. So the, the, I, to me, the tricky part in here is to remember to download this proxy class and to not add a service reference. So I'm going to go ahead and post a, a version of the sample code, and obviously I'm just going to run it here, and you can see it'll pass in this Dell information and return a DUNS number and just add into the console. And there we have three different entries in the DNB database for Dell. Of course, just like we showed earlier um, in Power Query, we could filter out, we could get more information to see which is the correct one. As shown in the demo, we have a now familiar access pattern where the data from the data set is exposed via an OData feed that is set up in Visual Studio as a service reference. You must pass the credentials and the key when calling the method, and you must pass in the required parameters. Other than that, the coding is pretty straightforward, and then you can then call the particular method and uh, return the cleanse match information programmatically. A couple of other considerations. When you're working with the datasets programmatically, you can work with HTTP or OAuth authentication generally. You want to you want to verify for the particular data set you're working with what types of authentication are supported and that will be in the documentation. 
There are two types of programmatic query based on the way the data set is set up. One is fixed, where you can call predefined methods, and the other is flexible, that you can call with optional parameters. You generate a proxy via Visual Studio as add service reference. For more information, take a look at my associated blog post where I've written up the reference guide to cleanse match data set, working with the various tools or programmatically. And if you want to try it out yourself, send email to the email address listed below to get the promo code so you can get started. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I'm Lynn Langett. If you want to learn more about Hadoop, SQL Server, or AWS, just click on the screens for the playlists. And if you want to follow and see the next things that I'm learning, just click on this big subscribe button and you'll be notified when I post new videos. Thanks again.